In Praise of Shadows by Junichiro, um, uh, yeah, Junichiro Tanizaki. Um, I could be pronouncing that totally wrong, um, as especially with Japanese names, uh, they have a similar kind of akis and this and so and chikis and <laughs> uh, like Giyakami or uh, Murakami, but um, some of them are easy. Mishima, Dazai, but even Osmo Dazai, his name is he. Uh, Th that wasn't his real name, you know. That was uh, it, it was a pen name, um, but yeah. So this is an interesting one. It's uh, 1933. It was a while ago. I, I remember uh, looking up halfway, partway through, because I was like, suspecting. Because I, I thought this was rather modern. I thought this was like an essay, and it's only like a little essay, an hour and a half read, maybe two hours. Give it some time. Uh, that's the Zen way, the Sabi way, um, and yeah, in kind of film and. F Cogitate? Yeah, cogitate's word. Um, so yeah, the interesting thing, I I do have some notes here just because I have, uh, so replacing the glare of my thing for the color on the screen, and yes, um, I think this is actually fitting because uh, this ties into like the lighting and me trying to get the right lighting and maybe I should, maybe not, and I should be more in praise of the shadowy depths of my room. Um, because <laughs> it's everything, everything's like really dark, especially when it's late at night like this, I should, um, but yeah, so, Junichiro, so, um, Tanizaki, he's talking about, um, this was in 33, 1933, so, almost a century ago at this point, it's, uh, crazy, um, but it was on, it seemed like almost on point about how he's talking about, um, so he separates this whole book into 16 sections, and he's talking about, um, the construction of different things. So he's talking a lot about aesthetics and kind of more of a philosophical thing. Um, and for more of a context, uh, Tanizaki is actually a, a Japanese novelist author. So um, something of a critic in his own right. You know, he um, transcended different genres. And uh, I haven't read, but I heard Some Prefer Nettles is a is a good book by him. A good start to play. Maybe a good place to read. Uh, read. I'm sorry. Um, and there's another one that starts with an N. I want to say it's like Naomi something. Naomi. I'm not sure, but I will try to get to this too, uh, especially since I've got my grip to my attention with this. Um, but yeah, he. Um, so basically, <laughs> I'll try to get rid of that word. He's talking about you know shadows that we need. The Japanese have a way of contrast, a a kind of um, elegant way of you know, the dichotomy between light and dark that they praise, that they have actually as a cultural kind of uh, icon. They, um, you know, whether it's like the like the dark kind of, the way their, their bathrooms look, the simple way that you go to the bathroom, it's not the same thing in the Western world. Like, I think I've only seen it via TV screens and maybe some, uh, you know, maybe at a cheap holiday inn that's kind of trying to push a kind of Japanese kind of setup. <laughs> um, I've only seen it then, there, kind of through imitation, but I have seen, I have, I do know what he's talking about, that kind of, uh, Japanese paper is very, um, not bab babu, he said it was just called Japanese paper, I think that's what he referred it to, um, and that in there kind of arises a very, a, a peaceful kind of introspective, um, kind of thing, and that's, you know, he, he relates this to Kabuki Theater, too, where everything is, uh, light and dark, you know, uh, black shadow, shadows and, um, you know, the, the, um, brightness. So that's kind of this, um, he's talking about how the culture of the Japanese has l more room. Uh, this ties into the, um, philosophy of sabi, uh, or, uh, wasabi, I think, the full. Um, and it's basically, you know, like an acceptance of impermanence, that things are going to be imperfect, or imper, I'm sorry, imperfect. The, you know, the kind of assimilation and resignation, but not in a pathetic way, not in a quiet resignation, throw or whatever, you know, it's not. It's more so a, a peaceable resignation knowing that things are, are not going to ever be perfect and things change. Things are always changing. And I think this, this is where he comes into kind of uh, not to you know, crap on the Western world. He's not, like, just, like, setting out invectives, but he does have a kind of measured kind of critique of us Westerners and how we see, and it's true today, even, um, especially there, now more than ever, actually, 
um, with the influx of architect, not architecture, but um, electricity. You know, like electricity is like coming. You know, it's like been. I mean, I use it. We all use it. We're all accustomed to it. We're all kind of birthed into this, kind of thrust into the world, as Heidegger says, and, like dogs. And um, yeah, so that's the um, kind of the American way, especially. He said that um, toward the end of the essay, he's talking about how America and Japan kind of are the two most kind of offenders in excessive electricity, I think, like the uh, the racking up the bills, you know, leaving the lights on. And he says that it's interesting because Japan, like towards the end of it, um, it's very eloquently put, but he, um, he you know, he says that um, we have to, us older kind of people, um, and I guess at this point he might have been in his 40s, I think, um, so he was like, kind of like, we uh, kind of, the older uh, among us have to kind of quietly, you know, diligently accept that these changes are going to happen because Japan's like coming, kind of piggy, piggybacking off America. Like they're, they were kind of in the 30s at least, maybe 20s. They saw American culture and they're like, yes, we like that efficiency. We like, it's interesting, interesting too, because I think a similar phenomenon happens, uh, you know, still occurring with um, North Korea. I'm sorry, South Korea. North Korea is its own kind of just like <laughs> hellish kind of just in um, uh, this is from an outsider's perspective but I never want to go there just because I, I just don't even want to go in a million even in the outliers of North Korea just to, maybe South Korea one of these days but um, yeah but South Korea is like I see how they look at kind of or Bollywood too with like the way that Indian entertainment mimics American entertainment but it's everything's heightened um, there's actually this very funny movie that my brother told me about uh, that we actually watched um, semi-recently. It's called Bahu Bali, and it just, everything is so <laughs> over the top. It's like this Indian legend that's like of this kind of warrior kind of person, and it's like everything is so dramatic, and like everything, everybody's breaking into song every second, and every single second he's like always Bahu Bali, the main hero, is is always just like effortlessly like a Marvel hero. He's like, makes Marvel heroes look like sissies. Like, you know, he's just like <laughs> effortlessly like lifting these like huge statues or, uh, you know, leading in, leading like masses of men to follow him. And yeah, he's just like, um, but yeah, so that's kind of the hero myth of like, that's the kind of thing we, we see, I guess. So we, we see kind of, I think America has a similar kind of thing where they're like, we, yeah, we're tough. We can take it. And he's talking about how, uh, cause the first section, of the 16, he's talking about more so the architecture and the engineering aspect, and that he himself tried to kind of design a home, but every time he could never walk away satisfied because he always made things a little bit too, um, a little bit too, like, um, what's the word? Em like embellished, maybe? Because then he goes back to the point of like, well, maybe, I, I like this about him, because he's like talking about how uh, the, the, um, He's always kind of looking at the counter, I, I kind of opposing opponent idea kind of thing. He's always looking at the dialectic of what he's talking about. So he's like talking about, oh well, um, yeah, well, what if architecture should just be that, like just a home and you know a place where you want to get warm, like you know, it doesn't have to have all these like flourishments and you know, it doesn't have to be buzzing with anything or super unique. It just has to be sustainable, and that's very utilitarian kind of brutalist even approach. Um, you know, like, excuse my headphones. <laughs> um, yeah, but he is, you know, I, I love that about his writing is that he's able to kind of, um, see both sides of the coin and he's like coming to, you know, it's like, well, he, this point of view and there's this purview over here. Um, but anyway, so he's talking about that. And then he also talks about how, um, yeah, America's like super big with like flashing lights and neon signs and, uh, and then there's also these kind of lights where he talks about that of his generation, like his mother. I think he talked about his, excuse me, um, family hierarchy kind of got down the, uh, his ancestors, like how um, he even remembers seeing his, I think his mother or maybe his aunt, I think, um, would blacken their teeth because in order to be a geisha, uh, there was this very specific kind of, and this is again something I actually observed, um, is not, you know, again on, you know, probably through a screen, but yeah, through um, the geisha and how they whiten their faces purposely, but, and then th that makes much more the blackening of the teeth. So that was actually more of a, uh, 
in the 18th, you know, like it probably kind of died out in the late um, 19th century, early 20th century. So that's probably when he came of age and he's like remembering how that was a actual thing, a uh, habit of geishas to blacken the teeth and then whiten the face more. So it's like they, um, you know, so that contrast stands out. So that's very, that's very um, compelling though. That's like, I, I never quite, I never put that to those two together but you know again with the kabuki theater and the the japanese paper and the way that western paper we think about paper is like you know a, a utility kind of thing that we write you know we just you know we use you know print it out in the same shape and just kind of very very utilitarian you know we don't really think too much about you know the the like orthography or um there's a name for the calligraphy i think that's like a very beautiful um, art that should be preserved, and there's like a, a t and there's like a lot of beauty in Japanese art and everything that they, uh, I I hope pre preserved in most part. I've, I'm and I'm only hearing this uh, of 19th. You know, I only have a kind of surface level idea uh, of these things, and but yeah, it's, it, I hope that all that beauty and that sublimity of the. Uh, even the mundane of the the Zen way of you know of zazen you know Zen is everywhere like a Zen is you know like washing your 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 dishes or <laughs> brushing your teeth like all these things you, we think of them as like oh they're so awful like we're you know they're so boring like we don't you know and they are you know obviously um, that's that's the point like they are the routine things and that's I think Japanese have a way a certain way of uh, that embracing of of just the moment. And that architecture allows them room to breathe in that sense. Like, it's not just a, you know, like, a, a place where you just kind of, like, vegetate. Here, like, in, here in America, where there's just a TV on blurring all the time. Um, or a radio, or sounds, and stimulation, constant stimulation. But it's, like, a place where you could be silent, truly silent. And have, like, room to kind of, um, almost like an open system of some kind. You know, it's, like, it, it's, it's with nature. It's with, it's, like, one with nature, you know. Um, and that's kind of with the same, that's probably the same might go for other kind of countries that have similar kind of tendencies or cultures and stuff that have been, uh, hopefully, uh, persevered over the years. So yeah, the, um, and I just want to read another quote where he talks about the, um, alcove room that he talks about. Um, so Tanizaki says, whenever I see the alcove of the tastely built Japanese room, I marvel at our comprehension of the secrets of shadows, our sensitive use of shadow and light. For the beauty of the alcove is not the work of some clever device, an empty space marked off with plain good, pl plain walls and plain walls, plain wood and plain walls, so that the light drawn to it forms a dim shadow within the emptiness. There is nothing more, yet, yet we gaze into, into the darkness that gathers behind the crossbeam around the flower face, or beneath the shells. Uh, through the, though we know perfectly well it's mere shadow, we overcome with a feeling that this small corner of the atmosphere there re reigns complete and utter silence here in the darkness of immutable tranquility holds sway. So yeah, um, and then I also, there was a point where he was talking about, seemed to be kind of, on, and again on point about something uh, that was happening uh, even as late as, as the early 30s in America, um, where Amer like the uh, not just the West, but in particular the United States had the Civil War. Like he was talking about how um, shadows and, and darkness in relation to the African American, and that how the African American man and woman, their condition of being kind of almost like left, uh, almost like the uh, I think the way he described it was like you know the, one or two of them would enter a room, and then people would like you know like the the mood would darken. Like there's like a weird kind of um, like almost like a like a, a curse with them, like as if they were, um, and he's pretty right on about the, like the way that uh, they were treated throughout history and just kind of always subjugated to the like a uh, slave -like or slavish kind of um, degree, you know, like the way they were constantly. Um, and I recently would like to do the hook thing, but I I think I recently finished it was uh, ain't I a woman, uh, not the Sojourner Truth, but uh, Bell Hooks uh, the. The kind of uh, I think eighties I think she wrote it seventies I think she was talking about civil rights and kind of like you know um, and she gave like a pretty thorough background of, of that but um, 
but yeah, I just thought that was interesting that how how he's like able to kind of relate that back into the kind of story. So, um, yeah, so he's like talking about how near the end. I, I just wanted to kind of repeat that if I haven't already that he talks about this um very like he's not like bitter about you know the future at all. He's not like gonna hold <laughs> clutching to his pearls like you know like no more like tea ceremonies, no more this or that. And he's like that's not the case. He's like you know he's. Like he's like saying like let's bravely step into the future and see, and see what becomes of it you know um, but let, but I think he also implies strongly that like let's not just blatantly or let's not thoughtlessly leave these very beautiful traditions in the past and I you know I totally agree with him so um, yeah um, and then there's another thing that reminded me of the uh, the I think it's called uh, sipping Nirvana I think. The, um, I have it here. I've actually not finished. I'm about halfway through. It's called the T. The um, Oops, uh, the Book of Tea by uh, Kazuku Okara, who I just kind of like recently heard of him a couple of days ago. And uh, yeah, I only just started it like literally like a day or two ago. But yeah, it's um, yeah very again very interesting take on the history of like the tea ceremony and Zen and. Um, the the Vodhidharma and the kind of how that kind of translated trans you know how that um, made its way to Japan and yeah I'm, I'm really liking all these Japanese kind of things I don't know why, I'm, why um, what spurred me to or not spurred but prompted me to uh, read all these Japanese things but yeah they're very very uh, invigorating so that's all I have for um, in praise of shadows and thank you much. I don't know why. I could have just sipped water from the beginning, but I decided just to soldier through it. Um.